Hello everybody, my name is Rodgon. I'm an artist, a designer, a teacher, cartoonist, illustrator, and everything in between. And today we are going to learn how to draw something. So, I was thinking about the lesson today. And I realized that I really, 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 really want to teach something that is really hard to teach. And I think that I have developed a little way of drawing a very specific body part like arms legs ankles and stuff like that and I'm gonna show you guys how all that is connected and how it's <clears throat> interchangeable shapes that overlap over your entire body so <clears throat> we are going to call these links cool and links are going to be very simple to do body links Body links essentially work like this. Well, you can see it there, you can see it there. Cool. You have an element, and then you have another element over it. Now, in this case, something like this would be kind of like a jelly bean as well, right? But we have to think of these as two separate elements. The bottom shape and this top shape. Now, the reason that we need to learn to think about objects like this and overlap in this way is because we are going to be using these as pivot points for things such as your rib cage, right? For things such as your ankles, for things such as your legs, and other body parts like the arms, and other body parts as well, including like other elements like your noses and your cheekbones and stuff like that. They eventually get used, use this as well. And let's just use some highlighter to enhance one of the shapes. So it makes sense. <clears throat> now, this is not a complicated shape to draw, right? But it helps you out so much in a lot of different aspects. For example, when you're trying to come up with a rib cage, that is a perfect rib cage because it gives you a lot of properties. Is this empty? I think I killed the pen. Woohoo! Right, this same concept applies to a bunch of different aspects. Your rib cage is one of them with your muscles and stuff like that coming in as the secondary shape. Um, mid section, mid squishy section. So abs, um, love handles. Okay. So that's the bottom part, and the top part is your rib cage. Cool. Now, how is this going to apply, let's say, to an arm? Well, an arm is very similar. You have your arm, the top, and the bottom. And when you rotate these, you end up getting the rotation that you need. Okay? It's that same shape, that same concept, just applied a little bit different. Right? And all you need to do is add a hand to this, and then you have an arm. All you need to do is add a foot, and the ankle is the same way. 
and then you have a foot. Same concept of an overlapping shape. These connections are very common within like a body structure. And they allow you a lot of uh, creativity when it, well, not, not good creativity, but it's just really like good to understand how they connect, honestly. Like, and once you understand how to develop your, you know, like bodies like this and your connection points like this, it's gonna be really easy for you to just draw hands and stuff like that because it's going to become second nature. It's gonna involve a lot of practice, but eventually you'll be able to use this sort of stuff to create poses and create drawings and doodles that have a little bit more depth, especially when it comes down to your body parts like your legs and your arms. It also applies to places like your face and stuff like that. But that's a whole other beast for a whole other like lesson. Right? Like the, that is just a completely different like lesson plan right there. Because that involves a whole mess of like overlapping shapes and stuff like that. But once you start visualizing things in your characters and stuff like that with those things in mind, then your drawings are just going to come together a little bit better. Because well, the moment that you start visualizing things as actual shapes, as opposed to just squiggles and L shapes and angles and stuff like that, when you stop seeing things like this and you start seeing things like this, being able to trace the front and the back of your shapes, right? So you can find things from both sides. Imagine that this was like a mermaid's arm or something like that, and you wanted little fringes on the edges of it. You'd be able to do it really easy and know where the other ones are. A mohawk, perfect example. You trace the top of this, and depending on how you want it to curve, you just follow that line. If you want it on the other side as well for like a dragon or something, you just got to learn how to trace your line so you can do it as well. Right? A good measure of understanding if you know how this works is to draw a circle and then draw a sphere by subdividing it and then try your hardest to make things come out of it. And see if you understand how it should look like going in every direction. Right? If you can't do this, you don't understand what it is to put objects or overlap objects properly in space. I'm not saying I am perfect at it at all, so don't like take that as me being arrogant. It's just me letting you know that this is a measure in which you can determine if you are incapable of understanding how this works. And if not, let me give you guys some tips so that you guys can get there. Right. Something like this, like a maze or... I don't know, like a monster that has like a bunch of like eyes or something like that. <clears throat> but anyways, when you master the ability to do things like this, and you can do this with different shapes as well. It doesn't have to be a circle. Like, learn to do that with a box. Learn to do that with everything. And it doesn't have to be spikes. It could be anything you want. Like, you want to practice noses? 
Well, then draw a sphere, and you want to practice noses from all angles. Subdivide it so you have different angles of approach, and then start drawing noses as if they were just little diamonds. And see how that shape works going in different directions. This is how you master all those like weird angles. Literally by just like spending some time like drawing on a sphere. You have problems with eyes, do the same thing. Grab this. Make this it doesn't have to be subdivided like this either. It can be subdivided any way you want. Like you want it like that instead? Yeah, do that. If you want it like in a grid, just add more stuff. You know, whatever way works best for you. And then just from there, start going in and drawing elements like eyes. Right? You can do this on a bigger scale and then just start practicing your eyes, like your eye actual eyes, by taking a sphere, finding two hemispheres, going around it, and that's how your eyelids are drawn. That it, eyes are really easy. As if you visualize things like this, eyes are just like the simplest thing in the world. Because it's a sphere. And it's just a circle inside of a sphere. Ta-da, that's, that's it. That's all a circle is. And then if you want to create cool eyelashes, it's just something going around your sphere, so it's just like drawing one of those other lines again. The upper one is a little bit thicker, or you can add back the eyelashes if you want. The bottom one as well. And then you already have your eyelid and everything. So I don't like I, I don't see a drawback to learning how to draw your eyes like this. There's literally no drawback. Like when they teach you how to draw eyelids by drawing this, right? Draw a, a almond shape and then draw a circle inside and then draw a circle inside and then draw another circle inside. Yeah, you can come up with something really cool like that. But when you understand the concept of going around your shape and the fact that you're drawing through your objects, you will understand how the rest of your body works alongside with it. It's more like alongside the sides of sculpting rather than just drawing lines because we're taking all the basic concepts that we know like a circle into a sphere right? and then we take that and then we start adding other circles and once you are able to get to the point where it's a beanbag and you combine the elements into this, then you have unlocked almost 99% of whatever all you need to draw anything ever, right? Once you get here and you're able to map out the front and the back of your bean bag, right? You go like, so you can go the front and the back and so that you can identify points like ears, jaw bones, arms, hey, and legs. That is the reason that we learn how to do that. Serious to art, Rod. Hey, what's up? How are you guys? All right, let's read some comments while we just uh, give my hand a rest and I drink some tea. So, Lavendin, CVM, Deontay Miley, first like, woohoo, Chris Cook, hey, everyone. Emily Arts, good job, I have notifications on, hey, everybody, Chris Cook, I just got Instagram updates, um, <laughs> um Chris Cook, how do you apply this to different body shapes? I'm designing a big Scottish Viking type with large shoulders and a big belly. Ooh, I'm going to use a post-it. Oh, I'm, yeah. Okay, so 
He's saying, how do we apply this concept to a big bulky shape? Well, it's going to be relatively easy. Our initial bean bag is going to be relatively large with a slightly smaller lower part because we want it to be top heavy, right? Even though he has a big belly, he's going to probably have like a big muscle structure. So that's what we're drawing. We're not, we're not drawing, we're not drawing the muscles or the fat. We're just drawing the body, like the actual skeleton form. So we're going to have our initial linkage, which is our big rib cage shape, and then into our hips. Nice and simple at first, right? This is the first overlapping shape, and this is our first link. Now, we got to come up with the legs and coming up with the legs on a beanbag shape is really easy. We just give it underwear. Give it some underwear. That gives you the positioning for your hips. Now he's going to be a nice and short stocky dude. So we're just going to give him some stocky legs. This is going to be another juncture for another point like this. We're going to have uh, like that. Yeah. That is how it connects for the knee. So that's the second time that we use this sort of connection. Okay. As you can see, it provides a pivot point for your leg without creating an overlap of whatever, like over here as well. If you were to trace a pivot point here, you'd be able to move your back and your spine, your rotate, or you would be able to rotate the bottom part through that point. Uh, so that it would be step two. Now, the Viking is also going to have feet. So the same thing happens here. Another connection point, just like the one before. Okay. So another linkage right here happens again. This becomes a lot easier to understand when you start understanding the concept of a 3D shape, right? So your leg stops being this, your leg starts being this, and then your leg turns into this. And you can separate the kneecap too if you want, but that's, that's another extra step that you can add later. And then from that, that turns into this. And then you can keep going and level in detail and add musculature and stuff like that as well. Hair, all that stuff. Like you can, but once you already understand how this linkage works, then you can take that and simplify it. You can exaggerate it. You know, you can do whatever you want to it once you understand it. Understanding it is like the basic start. Okay, so the next part where this would work is kind of it, it kind of does this again at the top for our collarbone right it almost does this a little bit but just understanding the concept of having something cut in is going to help you here it's not necessarily the same thing but it's it's similar then we have our shoulders which is going to be another pie Another part in which is going to be necessary to understand that concept, right? Yes, the muscle isn't necessarily that structured like that here, but it just helps to understand that it wraps around an object. So I get used to drawing it just like a piece of armor. And then your arm comes in underneath it. Then your arm has the same concept with your forearm. And then guess what? <laughs> your ankles or your wrists are the same thing. So 
you get here, which is your bicep, and then this is the top of your hand. So if your bicep's up, yeah, I guess you can still have it up. So that is kind of how you would structure it. All these little overlaps allow you to understand how that would cut in if you actually move that in, right? So it's crucial that you like figure out exactly how that works so that you can position your characters in all sorts of different ways. And it makes putting things into perspective and stuff like that a lot easier too. And then you would just add whatever head you want and whatever neck you want. So in this case, it's going to be a big, hulking, chubby one. And then you can, after you draw all that, then you can add all the fat to all the fatty parts that you need. And then create your character more akin of what your description is. Like you can always add more volume to it once you already have it established. But as you guys can see, there's a benefit to doing this like that because it's just makes it easier to figure out where the little pivot points are. So I decide if I want to put the arm up, the arm down, it follows those same pivot points. Same thing with the wrist and stuff. If I want my arm up, I can do it like that. If I want it down, I can do it like that. And that's just going to be like a really cool little thing to keep in mind whenever you guys are the Vikings. Runes and probably a sword or something. <laughs> How's the move going? Uh, well, it's it's going. It's uh, I'm all packed up, uh, kinda. I have a buddy that's going to take most of my furniture, so I'm just going to empty out everything really quick. And I think most of the stuff that I have, I'm going to sell. So I'm going to have some original artwork like for sale soon, like too, on my Instagram. So you guys should keep an eye out on that if you guys are actually interested in that. What ballpoint pen am I using? I'm just using a normal Bic round stick pen. It's It's nothing special, honestly. It's like the cheapest of the cheap uh, for the right you're the best anatomy teacher no way no 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 I think I think Proko still has me like Proko's uh, Proko's just amazing like but I, I take it as a compliment that you even mentioned me like that sort of stuff All right, show us please the connection to limbs of the human body, female body. Okay, well, the connection points are the same for female or male. So the only difference that happens is that whenever you're drawing your character, there are certain aspects of it that you need to keep in mind if you want to have a more voluptuous, curvier, or a more boxy person. I'm going to show you guys. All right, so first of all, we're going to draw our rib cage really quickly for three different body types. Now, if we wanted to make this character have like an hourglass figure, 
we can trace what hourglass figure we want by just drawing a little hourglass and then giving the bottom part of our hourglass underwear. Now you have your body shape that you exactly want. Right? And then you already have your connection points for your legs. And your legs work as a connection point, right? So you already know that your leg is going to can go into a different direction if you want it, or it can go into the foreground if you want it. Right? You can do whatever you want with that leg. You can even have it come down just more. So, it's not hard to come up with the hourglass figure for a woman if you just draw an hourglass figure and then just make your body from that shape. If you're trying to make an hourglass figure when you're just drawing boxes, uh, well, that tends to be a little bit more difficult because you'd need to understand at that point anatomy and like points of references that, you know, normally don't come to people that are learning how to draw. Like, yeah, I understand that, but I, I know a lot of people wouldn't be able to understand the concepts of what I just doodled right now. So it's a little bit harder to be able to explain it without being like, oh, well, your bone sticks out this way. And then your hip bone, you know, like pushes out your skin and it's a hard surface. Like I'm trying to make it accessible to everybody. So you guys all understand the concept of how to approach these. So whenever you are drawing a character, let's say this one, let, let's just give this girl in a, a little bit of a makeover. Let's say that we wanted this girl, but we wanted her to be much, much more hourglass figure, like a much thicker character. Well, what I have to do is, first of all, I got to figure out my rib cage. It's already there. And then I need to figure out my hip bones. My hip bones were already figured out for me. They were right here. All I need to do is make those hip bones bigger. Bring those hip bones and make those bigger and then conform your body to that. Right? So all you need to do, and if you want to bring it in, remember that it's your rib cage and your hip bones that dictate where your curves are. Right? This is hard surfaces. Hard surfaces in your body don't flex, don't move, don't change, don't get bigger, don't get smaller. That is your hard surfaces in the form of your hip bones and your rib cage. Now, whatever you do in between those, that's all open game, buddy. That that is where you go and you can add girth. Right? You can make someone really, really big if you want to. You can make someone really fit too, though. Right? Because you understand that these are bones. So all those little lines that you see, like your hip bones, and those little bumps that you see on your body, if it's not a muscle, it's probably a bone. So once you get the concept of those two hard surfaces, everything in between is just, everything else is just manipulative. Like you can manipulate even the muscles. If you understand where your muscles are for your leg, for example, this is why we learn anatomy, by the way, right? This is why we mostly learn anatomy so that we understand how things are shaped on our body. So let's say that we are trying to dissect a leg in the muscle structure on top of it. First of all, the bone comes out of the hip bone at an angle, like such. Right? We get something like that. That's coming from this little pivot point right here. It pivots in this angle, the pivot angle of this, which is a complex shape. It's not just the cone coming out. So it 
you have to get used to the rotation of how the muscle works. Now, but let's get each side set, right? And the first muscle structure that I like to define is the thigh. And the thigh tends to be kind of like a teardrop shape. And I like to actually bring it all the way out to the knee. Like I include the kneecap within that shape because the kneecap is a lot smaller than we like to think. Like it doesn't always cover the entirety of our knee. So I like to include it in one solid shape. If I simplify it, it would be like this. If I simplified this side, it would be I'm going to identify the top of the thigh by creating a division, just like I would with a body or like, you know, like the rib cage or the midsection. I like to find that midsection to my leg. Then the next step is to connect the bottom muscles to the leg. So after you have your thigh, you're going to have your calf. Your calf connects behind your thigh, behind your kneecap. And then that's where you get your muscles and your overlap. In simple terms, all you got to do is simplify a shape like that. You get this little cone shape from your calf muscles that are shaped like so. Your calf muscles and your forearm are very similar, very, very similar. So once you learn how the calf muscles work, you will know how your forearm works because this is literally interchangeable. Like that could have been a foot or that could have been an arm, right? It's just learn that little overlapping shape like I taught you guys right here and the arms and legs will just become stupidly easy. Uh, then the inside of the leg has what I call the squish zone. The squish zone is that inner little fleshy muscle that you have on your thigh that kind of conforms and it's, it only plays a role really whenever you're drawing elements that have like hips or like have like, imagine that someone's sitting down, right? And they're crossing their legs. This squish zone is the area that provides the little, the little lift against your help, hip bones. So that inside part of your thigh that provides the little, little squish. That's what that's what I call it, anyways. <laughs> Squish zone. Uh, let's see. But those connections are the same. Here, let's move the troll. We need more space for lessons. Okay, so we established that we can use this in our legs, in our ankles, right? All this stuff that I'm teaching you guys is about this interlinking system and learning how to do this. We also established that you can do it in the arms. And you can do it for your ankles or for your wrists as well. So this is the reason why, so that we understand how something rotates within that structure. We learn how to overlap our things better when we are visually representing them, right? If you spend a day just doing exercises like these, you will get better, much, much better at understanding how your body works in different positions.
your arms will become a lot easier to draw because you will have a slightly better understanding of how it overlaps. Right, so that's something that's very important for you to understand when it comes down to, you know, just getting this linkage, like these, like linkage, like thoughts in, uh, it honestly all does come down to just understanding the concept of 3D shapes and overlaps. Like once you get to this point, then you can just create that overlap very easy with any beanbag shape right so once you are able to get to this you can get to this and then that becomes your gateway to understanding just the structure of a lot of different aspects of anatomy it just makes the simplification process a lot easier uh let's uh go over here is this light like super bright for you too? i think that might be it Hmm. I still like it, but not so bad. There we go. All right, so let's see. Let's move on. And after I see everybody hit that little heart button right there, I'm going to give my hand a break and I'm going to drink some tea while I read your comments. So just give me a second. Try to hit this guy because uh, he loves to get hit. Hit me. There you go. Bam. And while we do that, let's read some messages. Uh, show us, please, the connection to limbs and human female anatomy. Uh, I'll, I'll keep on going with that in a second. Oh, uh, thanks so much. Can I copyright that? Yeah, sure. You're the best anatomy teacher. Oh, man. You are as is maximum aspiring. Oh. Uh, can I use the hourglass figure style everywhere? Please show the variations. Um, I mean, you can make any shape, any body into an hourglass. Once you have your, your rib cage, just figure out how big of an hourglass you want. And then come up with your hips. And then come up with your body parts. Right? Like it, it really is just a matter of understanding what creates the shape. Like it's your two hard surfaces. That's why we always draw like two shapes, right? Like it's two surfaces. And then learning how to connect those two is normally a bitch and a half. But if you just visualize them as two little like elements in space and then everything in between is all squishable, like squish, squish, and then skinny legs. So it's just skinny legs, skinny legs. And one elephant tied his leg. Oh. Right? Proportions and stuff like that just become something that you just play with as opposed to something that you struggle with. Things like foreshortening become a lot easier when you start thinking of things like that. Right? It's just a matter of understanding the concept of hard surface one, rib cage, hard surface two, pelvis, or underwear line. And once you have those, you can take those and modify them any way you want. Take your first shape. It can be it can be any shape, guys. It can really be any shape you want, right? Because once you start visualizing things in 3D, it doesn't matter. You can make it into any shape you want if whatever makes you happy or whatever fits your style at that point. But like once you understand the concept it's so hard to forget it and not see it everywhere it's so hard not to just 
try to like make that work with everything you draw. Because it's just so much easier <laughs> than any other concept that I have played with. Like once I started drawing like this, it was just a like game over. Like it just felt good. Like, I started understanding a lot of the things that people would tell me that are, like, foreign to me, you know? And then once I start visualizing things like this that are interlock, and I start seeing this, then elements like adding things on top or cutting or subdividing or positioning differently, it's it just becomes so easy. And I cannot stress enough how important it is to do this if you do anything sort of remotely close to concept art like it's just like it's honestly like the easiest way to learn how to draw body parts in different places All right you can just position everything in any way you want because you start understanding how things pivot And if you understand how things pivot, it's just really easy to play around with that. It just becomes Legos. It becomes connects. It becomes like you become just a puppeteer. And that works with everything, every part of the body. <laughs> I joined about five seconds ago, and I understand more from you than 25 videos I watched earlier. I appreciate that. I, I think uh, that's a lovely compliment to give me. Like, honestly, that's, that's, man, that, that's making me tear up, like, a little bit. Um, Jesus, that's nice. Oh. Okay, so, here, yeah, you guys uh, look at Kirby while I drink some tea. Manuel Vargas. Hey, how's it going? Rod is a mind reader. I'm having difficulty attaching the head to the body. The head attaches a little bit different, but it uses the same principle. Um, it's a little bit different because our heads and our jaw play a role when it comes down to how our head connects to our body. But coming up with the jaw and stuff like that becomes a lot easier when you are able to map out the front and the back of your elements aka just learning how to do this front back learn how to map the front and the back of it in positions like the bottom of the jaw become a lot easier to handle <laughs> and you can learn how to draw the head in every single way possible because it just becomes easy to map out where your ears are and everything else so but anyways our head has a pivot point like this but it comes right here underneath the jaw right it's this part underneath the jaw that creates that pivot now how does that apply whenever you are actually drawing well when you're drawing your character remember that your neck pivots around this little area so when you have this pivot point right here remember that your jaw digs into your neck and all that little squishy area right here, that little like midsection, like that thing that we never fucking know how to do anything with. Like, I'm gonna give you guys the purpose for that so you guys understand uh, when you're drawing it. So you have your head, right? And you have this area right here and you're like, what the fuck? Where do I put this shit? Why, like how long is this supposed to be compared to my neck and blah, 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 blah. Well, it's quite simple honestly like however far you want your head to be able to tilt that's how much space you can give that it also comes 
if you're actually using realistic proportions, this gap is going to match the length of your neck, creating a little triangle. So whatever length you choose here is going to be roughly the length of your neck. And you can test that on yourself right now by just bending your head down onto your chest. Do it right now. Just go click. You're going to touch your collarbone, which is the bottom of your neck. Right? So essentially your head is doing exactly what this is doing. It's pivoting over your ear and it's coming down and it's coming up. So it is one of those shapes, but it's just a slightly more complex version of that. Right? Here is your top part and your bottom part. And that pivots can limit the only limit is that this part of your chin can't go past your neck so that's the literally the tipping point of that space so if you draw this really long right because compared to your neck when you like pivot this back you could technically pivot your head all the way back here and have it look okay because you have all this space means that you can actually push it all the way back that much further into your head. Now, this means that your neck is in between your jawbone, right? Because it goes like that. So essentially it's creating this. Right? And you have your rest of your neck coming up. So that is what is happening and everything is pivoting from your ear. Now, when you see things like that, it's going to be a little bit easier to understand when you're looking at your jaw like a wireframe. If you see your jaw like a wireframe hanging from your ears, you start seeing that a little bit better. Right, you start seeing that connection point going from jaw to jaw, and you see it in the back as well. This comes a lot easier when you are learning how to draw through your shape, right? The reason that I can figure this out quickly is because I can figure out where both my ears are. If I can figure out where those two connection points are in my head, it makes it easy for me to set a chin and then connect both of those lines to it, giving me all the information I need for my character. So let's see. Uh, what, uh, let's read some more comments uh, and finish off the page with whatever comments you guys have. Meanwhile, hit little Heart Boy. Heart Boy has been a, a, a good good boy. Hit him a lot. He likes it. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Accidenti dreaming. Oh my, you really have the hand running down the lines. I relax strokes of perfect lines. You are ridiculous low-key. Thank you. Emily Arts, this is making so much sense. It's unreal. 
I wish I had an art teacher like back in this school. Oh, best just same. I just tuned in. Have you done a tutorial on hands? Yes, I have. We did a tutorial on hands. Well, it was a tutorial slash challenge. Let's see. Here it is. We did a hundred hands. So this video is on YouTube. Just go look for it. It was like a four hour long video while I explained every single thing I know about hands in as many different ways that I could and as many different styles that I could just figure out. So then we did one on heads too. And I explained a little bit of the thought process behind heads and what you guys can do and like how you guys can think and pointed out the anatomical parts that you guys need and stuff like that. <clears throat> boop, boop. Okay. So, have you done a tutorial on hands? Kennedy and I are going to be working on a bunch of things at the end of this month. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's going to be a really, really, really fun thing to work on. Um, poo -poo -poo, thanks again, Rod. You're the best. Oh, no, you guys are the best. You guys are. Uh, okay, let's talk about little variations of this. Okay, for example, if I was trying to draw this character right here, the first thing I would like to do is figure out where my rib cage is going to be. Then I always draw my rib cage and my hips like in a belly jelly bean sort of way. So I would just figure out my jelly bean and then give it underwear or cut it or slice it however you visualize that aspect of like getting that angle on the side i like to think of it as giving it like speedos because it's silly i like giving things speedos so now i have my midsection which gives me my collarbone my collarbone goes all the way to the side of the body as well creating a connection point kind of like the bottom part as well but it's going to be for the things for like the neck and stuff like that. Then from there, my legs, my legs come out like a teardrop, right? And they could be in any way I want from this point. Since I understand where the point is, I can draw my legs doing anything I want as long as they come out of that area. How cool is that? It comes down to our second connection point, like these, and it comes down to our thigh and our kneecap into our calf. Second junction, right here. And then our third one comes in the form of our ankle. Again, it can pivot up until your ankle would hit your bone or the front of your foot would hit that so you can position it any way you want as long as it stays within the limitations of what you drew same thing happens with the hands hands come out and you have that same type of connection point right there. The hand can also pivot as long as you understand where that connection point is. These connection points work for your wrists as well. Your wrist has a lot of flexibility. So you have the ability to move your wrist in quite a bit of different ways. So each one of those points gives you so much more flexibility to your like body that when as you practice your anatomy and you learn a little bit more about muscle structures, you'll just naturally start adding things to these, be it breasts or be it pecs. And you'll just slowly learn how to modify these things to make them look exactly how you want them. Be it with big muscly shoulders or big nice slender neck. Right? It's just going to be up to you whatever you decide to add on top of them.
So that's just going to be like, it's going to be really, really good for you to learn to do that. that, that just, let's just put it like that. It's like a fantastic skill set to learn how to do. Do, 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 do. Good luck in traces, by the way. Traces? Who's tracing? Everything's from my head. The good old Rod here lives off props and ego boosts. Yes, <clears throat> that is who I am. I think I've always been that guy. So, you know, uh, I tend to just do a lot of things from my own head. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's apply this to like a little character drawing or something. We'll apply all the things that we need learned and then we'll add even things like a tail and like show you guys how you guys can apply that to a tail <coughs> all right so we're gonna make a character like that uh, we'll make this his little rib cage right here gonna be his little rib cage which means that his collarbone is gonna be right there then this is gonna be the bottom part of his legs I want him like really Godzilla -y legs so I'm going to just give him underwear and now I'm gonna know where my legs are gonna come from uh, we'll give him like a little Godzilla face Our jaw is going to connect just like these connections. We're going to find one side of our jaw side, or where our ear would be, where our other ear would be. Find the other side, and we're going to trace our jaw all the way back there. Okay. Our chin can have little hairs or whatever. But now we at least know that we would see a little bit of that underside of the chin right there. Moving on down, let's do little T-Rex arms. Our rib cage is going to dictate where our arms go. Our collarbone dictates where the top of our shoulder is going to be. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to put my little arm starting right here. Where? gonna draw a little T-Rex arm and then I'm gonna show you guys how those connection works work so here it would be this connection right here into the bicep and then your wrist would move up and down I'm gonna match this exact same positioning on this other side to do that, I need to be able to trace around my my shape to find that other point on the other side, and then build my arm out from there. Not sure how much you would see it, so that's why I just kind of showed the little fingers. Okay, we're gonna move onto the back of the little reptile. I'm going to make his back a little bit more accentuated because I want him to have a straighter back. It's going to go down onto his little feet and the tail would start coming out from there. So I'm just going to leave it at there. For the front, this collarbone is going to connect to both of my sides of my ear creating my neck muscles, my initial neck muscles, and the rest of the muscles would connect to the collarbone and the rib cage. And pectorals. 
I'm going to give him a little beer belly. And the beer belly would go up until where my hips connect to the body. And it would have volume in itself. Then um, let's move on to the legs. The legs are going to be relatively short, but they're going to have this same concept. We're going to have a teardrop for a thigh that connects into our calf, into our feet. Gonna do the same thing by finding the other side of this and then doing the same thing with this the tail I'm gonna change the positioning because this is a little too high for what I wanted so I'm gonna follow the beer belly down into the bottom of my shape and I'm going to come up with a better tail than that. Now, the tail can be thought of as entirely links like that. So if you think of your tail as just links connected in that fashion that get progressively smaller, It makes it so easy, guys, like so easy to just move it around and have it do whatever you want. Right. So that's um, that's something to think about whenever you guys are drawing, right? If you guys are having a hard time understanding a concept, this might be one way to break out of that. Hmm. Ta -da. And now we have just created a little monster just straight up just using those same concepts over and over and over. And then even concepts like buildings and stuff like that can be thought of the same way, just eliminating that thing. Like overlapping in general becomes a lot easier when you just learn how to do that. So as we get close to the end of our stream, uh, we're almost done with our page, so we will call it a day. I need to go run and do like a bunch of shit today. But I will most likely be hopping on TikTok a little bit later and just drawing from like, you know, Disney movies and putting on whatever TV shows we want and then anime or whatever, and then just drawing from that. Like that has been incredibly enjoyable to me, so I'm going to be doing that a lot more often than not. So. Anyways, just tune in a little later if you guys want another lesson. Ooh, that Pokemon! Tyrantrum? <laughs> no, we're not done yet completely. I still want to finish up filling on the page a little bit. But I just wanted to, uh, you know, just make sure that you guys uh, start getting the concept down. So legs and arms, do it like this, right? Shape one, shape two. Mm, shoulders, use it like this as well. Mm -hmm.
right? There's this overlap that happens on top of it. And as we have talked about a little bit, once you understand this concept, it applies to a multitude of different ways of doing it. Once you understand the concept of, for example, body shapes and how these two elements work together, body shapes become a lot easier to handle. Uh, they stop being so intimidating and they can become a lot more creative so therefore it helps you build your style a lot easier right it helps you find your style but you need knowledge and practice with anatomy and learning how to see things like this in order to be able to do that now it's very easy to fall under the guise of just copying somebody else's work to the point where you are good enough to replicate it without really needing any reference that's not necessarily the way to find your style right like your style is a con it's a conjecture of a lot of the different things that you learn from other people but at the same time it has to be something that evolves into something that is based off your knowledge it has to evolve into something that you have tried to uh distinguish from other people and that comes only with knowledge and the ability to be self-critical. Uh, if you're not self-critical about your work, you're never going to be able to get to that point. Uh, like, you need to understand that there's an infinite amount of things to learn. And there really isn't any single way to get taught how to do that stuff after a certain point. Like, I can't find art books that I learn new things from anymore. And that's not being cocky. That's just me being an advanced artist. Uh, and especially if you're a person that teaches and tries to, like, you know, develop different ways of teaching, you, you start realizing that a lot of people base their knowledge off of the same concepts, right? So if you see a flaw or, like, a problem in understanding one way of drawing, that tends to be the case with a lot of different books because it it all gets taught the same way. We all learn from the same books. So I'm aiming to change that a little bit, right? Like, I don't know if the way that I teach or I approach things is any different than any other teacher does. But in the hopes that it is and I'm able to be more a little bit more eloquent in the way that I explain things to other people, then maybe I can actually make something out of this. And you know how fun it would be to actually be a teacher or an author of a drawing book that gets used all over the world? That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? You know, there's a lot of things in my life that I never thought that I would be able to achieve. Um, one of them was being an Imagine Effects. Uh, and I was there twice, two months in a row. That was uh, quite amazing. Uh, the other thing was I never thought that I'd be known for teaching anatomy. Holy shit, that just blew my goddamn mind. Right? Like, I, <laughs> I don't understand at what point I transitioned into being good at it. But now that I'm able to explain it a little bit more, I hope that I can help as many people not struggle with it like I did. Right? That, that's the whole goal for me. Like, the goal for me is not necessarily to make a lot of money with what I'm doing. It's just to help people throughout their careers. And if I can make enough money to survive off that shit, then great. It's, you know, that's, that's my dream. Like, it's, it's just to have a nice, peaceful life where I am old and scraggly and drinking my tea and peanut butter coffee... And uh, with like a bunch of cookies and shit. And then I just like draw like fun things for people at a coffee shop while I stream my holographic like teachings by then. And it'll be awesome. <clears throat> so we have come to the end of our stream. It didn't take 40 minutes this time. It only took 40 minutes to fill out the whole page. So yeah, interesting. We're getting quicker and quicker. 
Uh, as you guys can see from our arms thing yesterday, all that applies to your arms as well. Right? All this applies to your arms. And if we went to ankles and feet, you guys will see that it all applies. <coughs> now, peanut butter and coffee. Not necessarily peanut butter coffee, but that sounds really good, too. Look at how that applies to an actual drawing. Right? So this method of doing things applies to everything even like once you get big enough you'll start doing it with your face shapes you'll start doing it with your eyes look at the overlap right there eyes have that eyes have an overlapping shape in the shape of an eyebrow or uh you know what do you call it like eyelid that's what happens with your eyeball you have a line that goes around over it. So this concept applies to even eyes. <coughs> oh man, I'm dying. Hmm. Yeah, so that's a very cool idea, like concept. Like if you just think about it like, and apply that to different things, like, it applies to every aspect of anatomy, depend regardless of how detailed or how simple it is. It applies to simple creatures. It applies to complicated shapes. And things like that allow you to draw things like these really easy. Anyways, uh, we normally go live around 11 o'clock. Uh, oh, actually, I've been on for more than that. I, I started early. So, woohoo! Awesome. I think we did complete about an hour. Hope you guys have a wonderful time, wonderful day. Uh, it's Tuesday, so I get to go play pool tonight. So, I will keep on packing. I will do some freelance work. And I will do... I wish that I had my Twitch channel up. That's something that I have to work on. I have to get my Twitch channel up and ready so that we can just hop online and do freelance work together. And that way I can teach you guys, whenever I get new clients, I can teach you guys how to do the projects that my clients send me. So that I can show you guys how to complete a real life project every day. Something like a logo, marketing, characters, t-shirt designs, whatever. Like whatever I get. I'll just stream it, and then I'll show you guys how to do it. Boom. Day to day content. Bum, bum, bum. So, anyways, hope you guys have a wonderful day. If you guys have not subscribed to my channels, please do so. If I do have subscriptions for $5 a month that help me out get new equipment and live my life. So, if you guys do consider that I have brought any sort of value to you consider that and if not just go subscribe to my youtube channel that helps me build those numbers up go subscribe to my instagram and a lot of free knowledge and just everything ready for you guys to be able to just go in inspire yourselves and have an amazing fucking day of drawing now sketch buddies have a wonderful day love you guys all kick ass my nails are dirty that's gross see you guys later <laughs>